It says, how millennials replaced religion with astrology and crystal. That's us, right, Chris? These are yeah, uh, yeah. How old are you? Uh, thirty-five, I think. What year is it? Yeah, it is no, thirty-six. Thirty-six. Yeah. Oh, you might be. I. You might actually be the generation before a millennial. Oh, okay. Anyways, um, wait, really? Okay, fuck, I feel old. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, let's ignore what you just said. Let's go to the news. Millennials increasingly uh, identify as nuns when asked about their religious affiliation. According to a 2017 Pew survey, they are atheists and agnostics or say they are spiritual but not religious. But yes or no survey questions don't tell the whole story, says Diane Winson. Winson? Yeah. The, the night chair in media and religion. Okay, that's just, wow, that's a big title. Okay, Diane is important. That's all you need to know. Her title is very long, so I'm not going to go read the whole thing. Just about every society throughout human history has developed traditions and practices. Oh, no, no shit. Uh, that's not a coincidence, she said. People are inher inherently religious or spiritual. Um, okay, I hope you're not excusing it with the nat with the naturalistic fallacy, with the appeal to nature. But then she continues and says, oh wait, is this part of her comment or is this just the article? One of the big draws of uh, for younger people about spiritual practices is the ability to pick and choose, uh, said Jim Burko, a progressive Christian who works with college students as their senior Associate Dean of the Office of Religious and Spiritual Life. Okay, what kind of a college does this ha have this guy as the Dean? Seriously. Pro the Office of Religious and Spiritual Life at USC? Alright, this is why you have to pull your kids as from school, okay? School is bullshit. If your school has an Office of Religious and sp Spiritual Life, okay? This is why you have to... Oh, fucking hell. No, actually... I don't know, but um, if you if you are homeschooling, please make sure you don't homeschool like the Christian and Muslim parents do. Uh, actually, go look at the most what the standards should be for your kids. Go look at all the you know everything that your kids has to learn from home. But this is this is such a waste of money. Honestly, like I think half of the money that people are spending to universities and students is just going to waste. Uh, then the the rest of the news continues. Spiritual practices appeal to the commitment wary. You can get a little into crystals or astrology or tarot or a lot into it. So basically his argument is that these are for people that want to decide how committed they, they want to be. Because like these, this spiritual stuff is not as demanding as religion. What do you think about all this woo-woo stuff? That a lot of these, you know, so-called, you know, I mean, not so-called, actually atheists or nuns that believe in, um, do you think it's just harmless nonsense? It's okay. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. It's not harmless nonsense because if you would rather take, if you would rather take some homeopathic cure than go to an actual doctor to get whatever ails you treated, then, and then you spread that to, uh, other people and those people believe what you say then you're not only harming yourself you're potentially harming other people as well yeah and it's extremely because what people don't understand is that it's the main problem of all of this is gullibility right so when, when, when you have gullibility there's a lot of things that could grow on it right you could sometimes it comes off as i don't know believing in um, alien abductions sometimes can come off as something as dangerous as Islam or Christianity. Sometimes it comes in as believing that tea leaves could tell your, uh, f you know, future. But the thing is that you don't really have much control of what grows out of this fertile ground of gullibility. What you have to do is just get rid of that gullibility, you know. You don't you don't have much control of what grows out of it. It's just very random. It's very and it's very dangerous. 
Sometimes some plants are more toxic than the other, the ones that come out of this fertile ground, right? What you just have to do is like, you know what? We're just anti-bullshit and we have to teach people how to recognize nonsense from facts. That's what we, we don't pick and choose and see what's more dangerous than the other one. We just, we have to go at its roots. We destroy the nonsense making machine of gullibility at its root before waiting to see what comes out of it. Okay? That's my philosophy. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. I think it makes absolute sense, actually. <laughs> okay. Brett is saying, no one has died in the name of stones and crystals. Uh, <coughs> see, oh, this guy is actually uh, saying against what my views, uh, what I just said. So, Brett is saying, Brett continues and saying, rights and freedoms are not stripped away because of uh, fee feeling energy. That's the difference. Okay. I mean, I already responded to this. Um, if you believe that crystals heal you, first of all, that by itself is extremely dangerous, just by itself. But even if it wasn't dangerous, somebody that believes in bullshit just so easily. Okay, let's go. He, he, Brit doesn't give you a good example. If you think crystals have healing powers, you might actually use crystals in, instead of real medicine, and that could be extremely dangerous. I've we have. Didn't we didn't we lose um, Steve Jobs to this kind of nonsense? Yeah, yeah. Steve Jobs lost. Yeah, his, we did. yeah, we lost Steve Jobs to this way of thinking. He died because of this because he believed this kind of bullshit, right? So don't say it's not dangerous. Okay, it is dangerous. Uh, but even if I can come up with nonsense belief that is not that is, that I can think of a dangerous result. For example, yeah, yeah like palm reading. Actually, palm reading I can't come up with it way that could be dangerous but more often than not palm reading is ridiculous but if you actually believe in it usually doesn't result into anything dangerous usually okay i can't come up with scenarios if i use my imagination but usually it's not that dangerous right but you feel like okay palm reading believing palm reading is not dangerous well it, people believe in their nonsense okay but here's the problem if you are that gullible uh, that you believe in palm reading if that if your standards of accepting what is true if is that low then if somebody else comes and says hey vaccines cause autism and don't vaccinate your children you don't to me that's a sign that you you're gullible enough to believe that as well if you didn't demand evidence for palm reading you're not going to demand evidence for this it's very likely that you're not going to demand evidence or good evidence, you're not going to recognize what's good evidence when it comes to re deciding what's best for your kids. And that is absolutely dangerous, right? So even if you don't treat like believing in palm reading, for, for example, as something dangerous by itself, at least treat it as the sign for something dangerous that exists that could cause potential harm. If somebody believes in that, then these are people that could be taken advantage of for politics, for being conned, for believing in movements or, you know, cults or anything, um, or any things on it, or even chiropractors, right? Or, or like things that they're going to waste their money on, diets that don't work because, you know, they're going to get their kids to eat stuff that is going to be unhealthy for them. Um, they're going to believe like, you know, if you say, oh, my, my, Grandpa smoked cigarettes and he lived until 80 and he was very healthy and he was happy. So I don't think cigarettes are harmful. So they're going to say bullshit like that. So even if you see what I say is if we allow belief in harmless nonsense without evidence, we're also opening the door to harmful ev nonsense without evidence. Okay. So. Yep, my, our standard is just say no to nonsense, okay? And just say no to the source of nonsense. Do you agree with that, Chris? I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. I see. would rather... Yeah. Go ahead. I would rather get evidence for somebody else's claim than just to objectively, objectively believe what they say. Because if you believe what somebody says over a, over a claim instead of actual evidence right then yeah 
Brody is saying a palm reader could tell you you have a long lifeline, so you uh, so you do dangerous extreme sports and die young. <laughs> okay, Brody came up with an example. Uh, Soraya is saying it will harm people occasionally. How will that be harmless? It allows to exist the beliefs that are detrimental to our, to the society. Hey, actually, you know, it, this here here's a claim that we're making. Okay, and this is not an extraordinary claim. Okay. The more your beliefs matches reality, the better it is for the society. Is that really that harm? That you know, is that not a simple claim? Is that you know, forget religion, forget everything. Okay, forget like what kind of nonsense people believe in, whether it's religious or not religious. Okay, is it not an obvious claim to make that if more people believe more true things? Society will progress faster and more people will live better lives. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.